Next up on our biology two topic is natural selection. So this unit is really all about uh, Charles Darwin. So natural selection is a theory that was put forward by Charles Darwin where he said that animals and plants that are better adapted to their envir environment are more likely to survive, so therefore are more likely to pass on the genes, so will pass on their adaptions to their children. So natural selection is just the idea that the better adapted you are, the more likely you are to survive. So the stages of natural selection. Um, the first stage is that an organism develops a mutation, and that mutation gives it a characteristic which is an advantage. So, for instance, it might be um, a giraffe with a longer neck. That's a genetic mutation that's led, it, led to it having a longer neck. And that longer neck is an advantage because they can reach leaves higher up on the tree. Now, because they've got the advantage, they live longer, which means they have more opportunity to breed. So their genes are more likely to get passed on to the next generation. Now, because their offspring would also have that genetic advantage, their offspring live longer for the same reasons and therefore have more opportunity to breed. And because this keeps happening over and over and over again, the characteristic eventually becomes common to all the animals in the population. So the giraffes gradually get longer and longer necks until all the giraffes have got long necks. So for those of you doing the higher, um, we'd say this is a, a new species. And over time, the changes produced by natural selection can lead to a new species um, once the organisms become different enough. But this can only happen if the groups, um, if the organisms within one group can't mate with organisms from another group. So, for instance, they would have to either be geographically or behaviourally isolated. So, if um, we end up with a population of chimps on one island, and one of them develops an adaptation that sweeps through their population, that adaptation would not be shared with chimps on a different island because they can't breed. And eventually, over time, those two populations of chimps would become, com become completely different species. So an example of natural selection that's quite a good one to know is the peppered moth. Now, peppered moths come in two colours, as you can see from the picture at the bottom. Uh, the pale ones are much more common, normally, and they can camouflage on silver birch tree bark. But if there is a lot of pollution, the silver birch trees become black in colour. And that means that the um, pale moths stand out. And the rarer black moths um, can survive better because they are camouflaged on the dirty trees. So in those places, the black moths are more common than the paler moths. Uh, another example of natural selection is uh, bacteria becoming resistant to penicillin. So the way this happens is bacteria mutated so that some were resistant to antibiotic penicillin while others weren't. The non-resistant bacteria get killed by the penicillin. The penicillin resistant ones survive so they can then reproduce and pass on the uh, resistance to penicillin until all bacteria become resistant to penicillin. And this is why doctors are very reluctant to prescribe antibiotics unless they're desperately needed, because you're just weeding out the ones that you can kill and increasing the chance of there being more of the ones you can't kill. So Darwin's theory, not universally popular when it first came around. Uh, it's because some people thought he didn't have enough evidence, but most of the criticism came from the religious community because they felt that uh, his ideas were sacrilegious. They went against the word of the Bible because they believed that God created all the species that exist and the idea that they had come about over time was um, seen as being against God, against religion. So there was a lot of outcry and a lot of um, controversy at the time when he first released his theory. However, Darwin's theory is now accepted, and it's because it does explain a lot of observations. There is fossil evidence, so for those people where there wasn't enough evidence, there is a lot of evidence now that supports his theory. And it has been discussed and tested by many other scientists. It's not just one person that says that this is true, it's many. So Darwin's theory is now accepted as true. 
For those of you doing the higher, you do need to know that at the time of Darwin, he was not the only one who came up with a theory. Um, so John Baptiste de Lamarack explained that giraffes got long necks because they got that characteristic whilst they were alive. So Darwin said they were born with it because of um, a mutation. Lamarack said that they developed it. So Lamarack suggested that the giraffe stretched its neck to reach the higher leaves and it then passed on that characteristic. But it only got its long neck because it stretched it. Now we know that that's not true because we now have a very good understanding of genes and DNA. So we know that it is genetic mutations that lead to these advantages. But that was another idea at the time. Okay, so that's it for this topic. Hopefully quite short and sweet. Um, one that I would hope you're already relatively familiar with. So remember, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask me.